Jason Spangler of the Santee Swapper back with another unboxing. This one's going to be kind of fun because the gentleman who sent me these two boxes has actually watched some of my unboxings. In fact, when we started communicating about his scouting collection, he actually suggested that I film an unboxing video. So I thought that was pretty funny. So this guy actually went to the 1960 and 1964 Jamboree. That's pretty cool. You never know what's going to be in a collection with somebody who went to Jamborees because they could have traded for anything. He didn't send me any pictures. We talked on the phone. I believe this guy is actually a doctor, which kind of makes sense. If you had that kind of upbringing and, and went to those Jamborees, you probably grew up to be somebody uh, kind of important. So I'm excited to see what's in here. He was uh, so, after seeing these videos, he was like, I will send you this collection. We can make a deal. Uh, but he really wanted to see an unboxing, which I just thought was so funny. So hope you'll stick around and watch and see what's in these two boxes from the 1960s from this scout. Thanks. All right, so I've cut up in these two boxes and it looks like it's gonna be a great collection. This stuff has been well taken care of. I can actually smell a little bit of mothballs, which means that where he lives up in Pennsylvania, he probably wanted to make sure that this stuff was kept safe. So let's kind of get into these boxes. I'll take this first one that I've already cut into a little bit. Again, I really have no idea what's in here. All right, so I wonder what's in this box. A little thing here, this looks like it might be Oh, that's cool. Okay, so this is from the 1964 Jamboree. And what in the world is this? Is this like a, a silk screened? I think this is the pillow. I think that's what this is. I think this is a pillowcase from the 64 Jamboree. Now, I've actually gotten some of these before, never in the original box. They're always kind of spread out, kind of frayed a little bit. So that's really interesting that he held on to it all these years. This looks to be a patrol flag, and so I'm just wondering what kind of a flag that is. No, it's more of a, it's not a homemade patrol flag. There's actually some writing on the edging here, um, yeah, from the manufacturer. So I'm not familiar with that flag. Maybe somebody can leave it as a comment in the video and tell me what that was. Here's some more flags. Let's see what this guy is. Again, looks like be some sort of a nautical flag, but I'm just not that familiar with what that is. A couple more. Let's see what these are. Yep. And I guess, you know, these, I mean, this looks pretty interesting. I don't know if that's maybe, uh, gosh, I don't know what that is. The D right there almost reminds me of Camp Delmont, but I don't think the rest of it kind of matches Camp Delmont. Well, let's see what this guy is. Okay. All right. On, there's no telling what the story of this shirt is, but I'm assuming that it involved lots of walking because it looks like a trail there going on. And then we have some stuff from the 50, uh, 64 Jamboree. I'm sorry, yeah, this guy went to the 1960 and 64 Jamboree. So here's some paper items here, like a souvenir map, uh, which I actually have a frame of Jamboree items and kind of enjoy having stuff like that in there. And then there's a big bag here full of really good scout stuff. This looks like sort of a, a blanket bag you might get at a department store. I actually have some things at my house stored in these bags because they seem very handy. I've never wanted to throw them away. So let me get in here and start pulling some stuff out. All right, bags of patches. Philmont. Got the good old wall hanger from Philmont that I've seen from a lot of collections. Now that is pretty cool. Take a look at this neckerchief slide, Viking Council Region 10. Again, I'm assuming a lot of the stuff here would be connected to the Jamboree just based on what he has shared with me. So let me just keep pulling stuff out of the bag and we will get a good look at it. Lots of metal here, clinging and clanging together, neckerchief slides and things like that. So let's just keep going with neckerchief slides since that's an interesting one. So there's some more, you know, back in the 1960s, neckerchief slides were so much popular because scouts wore neckerchiefs with their uniforms. And so neckerchief slides were something that was sold, something that was made at scout camps. Uh, here's a bunch of Philmont ones. So this guy definitely would have gone to Philmont. That's probably the only reason he would have so many of these. 
and then also some needle slides. Let me put this one over here. This one's probably pretty special. If you look here, that's a needle slide. You can tell by the manufacturer's name on the little uh, loop on the back, but also it's for an OA lodge, and so that's kind of an unusual combination. So that one might be pretty special. Then again, we have more things here like the Orange Mountain Council necrative slide. Um, this one has some writing on the back. It says here, silver ore from Troop 61 in Utah. So let me throw that up on the camera. So a lot of time at National Jamborees, what you would have is people swapped all kinds of stuff. In this case, perhaps the scouts from Utah had made these decorative slides out of acrylic and then had some silver ore. Actually heard tales of a scout from North Carolina trading tobacco leaves at a Jamboree. So there's all kinds of stories there. Um, I have some sewn eagle patches. So as you might imagine, this guy definitely would have been an eagle scout given all his time in scouting. And then some other patches here as well that you can take a look at. And then here's one that he has several. I've actually seen this patch before, but always thought it was very, very beautiful. So Orange Mountain Council in New Jersey. Now, sometimes when you start to get into these collections and see in the patches, you can start to figure out uh, where this guy was from. And so that'll be a little harder to do in this collection because a lot of stuff came from the Jamboree. You don't know anywhere, could have been anywhere, but maybe we'll see a pattern here. So here's a really cool Los Angeles Area Council patch. Here's a North Carolina patch just coming home, Piedmont Council. Camp Murphy looks like he's got some camp patches here that he traded for. East Carolina Camperee, check that out. Another Carolina patch coming home. Resica Falls, Camp Mohican, Robert Treat Council, some event patches, reservation there, another Camp Re patch. So love getting old event patches. That's really the core of scouting actually is, you know, the, all these activities that we attend and, and of course summer camp. It's one of my big things as well. For some reason, I feel like I've seen one of those patches recently sorting out stuff in my warehouse. So here's two leather patches. And again, what makes Perfect sense here is this is the 60 and 64 leather patches, which that would have matched what he's shared with me about which jamboree he attended. All right, keep going through some more bags. So we have uh, some more camp patches here. Explore Base Indian Nations Council, that's cool. Con Conservation Camporee, Milwaukee County. I actually got a patch just like this, I think the other day, but I think the one I got was 1957. This is a 64 Region 5. New Orleans Council, 1952, Cedar Valley Council, their camp patch there. Here's a good old Philmont Arrowhead. So again, all the stuff that I've seen with Philmont on it. I see a t-shirt that I haven't even pulled out of a box yet. Definitely that's the guy I went to Philmont. Black Beaver Council, Orange Mountain. This is kind of cool. I've had a couple of these, the uh, U.S. Grant Pilgrimage. And then here's a cool one from the Rose Bowl. And I always like to get these Jamboree contention patches. These are not very common, come to think of it. You know, back in the day, they didn't always make patches for every little thing. And so to come across a contingent patch for a Jamboree is pretty special. Take a look at this one. This one's wrapped in some sort of saran wrap, uh, which I've seen a lot of patches like that from this time period. They didn't have plastic patch holders and stuff. And then here's a patch that I'll actually be keeping for my collection. I do not recognize that conclave patch. And I have a collection of conclave patches pre-1972 when they still had the original 12 regions. And so that one will be a keeper because I do not have that one in my collection. Again, it's just some more scout patches from all over. These are definitely from that time period. Check out this really cute one here where the guy's on a rocket. Um, again, a Jamboree contingent item. That's pretty cool. I've had this River Night Rats one before. But I'm coming across here, let me show you this, just going back to this idea of forensics and trying to figure out where the guy's from. So here are a number of patches from the Orange Mountain Council in New Jersey. Now, he may have told me that that's the council he grew up in. Um, it's been a little while since I talked to him on the phone, but just based on what's seeing that, it definitely makes me think that he grew up in New Jersey. Uh, he does live in Pennsylvania now, so that would make plenty of sense, all right? See what else we do have some more bags i love having all these little bags of patches to go through these are kind of different this is called a hat shaped patch and this was kind of a, a theme that was going on for a while um, here's some order the arrow items chickasaw here's eguita d from down in atlanta and then this would have been his home lodge if we're assuming that he was in that orange mountain council which i think we've 
pretty much figured that out. In fact, this would have been his council, I, I call that a pie, maybe a neckerchief patch, maybe in the other box we might find a neckerchief that has that pie on it. And then here's a flap from Alabama. So I know he traded for a little bit of OA patches when he was running around. And again, just another one from his home council. And then the last bag of patches from this little group, again, more stuff traded for at the Jamboree. So Camp Green event patches, district patches, um, this one's pretty cool. That's a nice design there. Indian Head Council, Greater New York, I've seen that. Here's another East Carolina from my area, Chattahoochee. Here's another Conclave patch. Maybe I'll see if that one would go in my collection. And then just kind of as an update, we saw this pie earlier. There's the patch from 1964 for his council contingent. And then the last one right there. So I won't break these out. There's no little baggie here of Jamboree patches from the 60 and 64 Jamboree. I've seen plenty of those. He did send his merit badge sash. And so just a quick look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 21 merit badges. And uh, being that he's an Eagle Scout, I'm guessing that this was exactly the ones that he needed. All right, let's keep looking, keep looking. I guess we're ready for the next, uh, the next box. So let's kind of see what we got here. This is the bigger box. Uh, on top we have t-shirts. So there's a Philmont neckerchief, or I'm sorry, t-shirt. Another one here. Um, this is, oh yeah, from that camp that he's went to in, in uh, New Jersey. Here's some regular old uh, neckerchiefs that BSA would have issued. Another flag, similar to the flags we saw earlier. I'll have to kind of spread those out and see if that's anything I can see make sense of. Then this little wad is going to be Jamboree neckerchiefs. And then here's a Philmont neckerchief. So again, neckerchiefs that got around. There was kind of a lot of them issued. So 64, the yellow one is 60. And then there's the Philmont neckerchief as well. Then down here, here's some some interesting ones. So here's some different neckerchiefs. Here's a 1960, another Philmont. I love old neckerchiefs. Staten Island 50th anniversary, that's pretty cool. I'm guessing this definitely could have been something you could have traded for to Jamboree. Just like you traded for patches, you could have traded for neckerchiefs. And then again, here's his home camp. These are in a bag. Let's see what this is. Okay, look at that. Strange little pennant there. I'm not even sure that that's Boy Scouts, to be honest. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Huh. You know, at the Jamboree, you would have had Scouts from other countries. And so here's another item that's from, it's a foreign item. I guess this is a, if it's a neckerchief, it's a really big size neckerchief. Kind of a strange design there. And then a nice stack of 64 Jamboree jacket patches, a great trading post item that he has kept all these years. More neckerchiefs from 64, more Philmont. Shift Scout Reservation, if he was in New Jersey, that would have been pretty familiar to him. That was a training camp that the BSA had. And then here's some more neckerchiefs. Let's see what these are. Okay, now here we go. Here's some more from his home lodge. So that is from Lodge 362. That's a really interesting design because you have the patch sewn on the neckerchief, but there's a whole lot of interesting stuff going on with the embroidery there. So take a closer look at that. That is really a cool neckerchief. I'll have to do some homework on that. I've never seen a neckerchief quite like that. Then here's some other ones here. Again, somebody from East Carolina Council was definitely, because there's another item from East Carolina Council, which is far east, obviously, in uh, Greenville, North Carolina. There's some more from his home camp here. And some more from his home camp here. Here's a great Philmont expedition. So again, if we sort of use this idea of taking what he has got in the box and kind of playing that back through his scouting career, maybe this was his Philmont neckerchief. Judging by everything here, it would make sense. He was in the Orange Mountain Council and he went to Philmont and so in 64, the only other thing that would throw me off a little bit is in 64, he also went to the Jamboree. So unless he had a really, really busy summer in 64, that would have been a lot of scouting because normally uh, most guys don't seem to go to Philmont and the Jamboree in the same year. But, you know, since that neckerchief is not sewn, it's still in the original bag. It also kind of throws me off. I'm not quite sure if uh, what to make of that. Here's a staff neckerchief from his camp. So definitely somebody this involved, it would make sense that he would have spent time maybe on camp staff. And so... Some more camp neckerchiefs from these guys. South Florida Council, and this one is from 
uh, Tennessee. So definitely some trading stuff. So more and more neckerchiefs in here. And I just peeked down and saw that there is a, uh, his uniforms in there as well. So we'll see that. So more from this camp in New Jersey. I'll have to do some homework and see if this camp is still open. There have been camps that have closed through the years. Obviously the Boy Scouts have merged and whatnot. I'm not as familiar with camps from New Jersey, but man, there are a lot of neckerchiefs from this camp. So that must've been a big, big camp. Another staff neckerchief again. So if you were on staff, that would kind of make sense. This guy was definitely very involved. And then here's one Man, take a look at this. I'm not quite sure what to make of this neckerchief. All right. So it's Order of the Arrow. We can see the WWW. We can see it's New Jersey. And then it says 484. And then this name, though, uh, Ram Ramapo, is not the name of any lodge that I've ever seen. It could be a chapter, maybe. So there is a lodge 484 um, with an Indian name that I won't try to pronounce. And so I will have to research that. That could be a chapter neckerchief from Lodge 44, which I think Lodge 44 is also in New Jersey. So that would make sense. Here's another one of these neckerchiefs from his home lodge that I already laid up there and showed you. So that makes three of them. Then a cool den chief neckerchief and some more camp neckerchiefs similar to what we've seen. All right, if you're gonna be a scout from that time period, you definitely would have your garrison cap. So he has a couple of garrison caps that he probably wore quite a bit and then he has his two order of the arrow sashes uh one is going to be his ordeal sash which is this guy and then his brotherhood sash so brotherhood member of the order of the arrow and then a couple of uniform shirts so let's just take a peek here and see what we got so again we're going to see this is an eagle scout aha now we have the answer he was an eagle scout from troop 19 in maplewood new jersey there's his shirt and there's the community strip that gives you the proof so we know exactly where he was from and then once again here's another jamboree shirt this is the one he wore to the 64 jamboree got the patch on there and then this one again same troop number and everything going on and this would have been his shirt that he had his order the arrow flap on and then that's it dun, dun, dun. all right so i finished this unboxing with a giant mound of stuff uh which is really cool I love getting collections like this, where it's sort of a time capsule. Somebody who was in scouting, it really meant a lot to them. And so they kept this stuff for decades. I have not seen a patch anywhere in this collection that was modern. Nothing 1970s, 80s, whatever. Nothing from the last, what is that, 50 years? So he has held on to this stuff for a long, long time. Obviously an Eagle Scout. So you can tell it really meant a lot to him. Noticeably, what I didn't see in here, maybe the one or two things I didn't see, didn't see an eagle medal and that happens quite often that there's just once people kind of look at all this stuff they've been holding on to and they try to decide what is it that some member of my family might want to keep a couple of things like an eagle medal definitely sort of falls into that list and so sometimes in collections i'll get eagle medals and sometimes i won't so when i follow up with him later i'll kind of see what his decision was about that because i'm sure if he kept all this stuff he kept his eagle medal he didn't he didn't lose track of that so I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video. If you have a scouting memorabilia collection that you have been storing up in the attic or you've carried it from place to place and now you're downsizing and looking for somebody who would appreciate it, I hope you reach out to me. You can go to my website, scoutpatchcollectors.com, find out more about what I've got going on. I am really involved in the, uh, the hobby. I have a newsletter. I do podcasts with other collectors and obviously make unboxing videos and such. So reach out to me if you have a collection that you'd like to, uh, to sell. Uh, I would love to recycle it back into the hands of scouts and scouters. Jason Spangler, The Santee Swapper. Don't cut short yourself, right? You know?